the body is meant to people. So our relationships is supposed to be from this place of the body. And so I started just listening to people. I started realizing that when I got out of my own head and when I was completely balanced, I could hear what they actually were saying without the lens of my triggers and trauma. I heard their pure truth. I just sat, I didn't even have to do anything. And I was authentic and I felt love that they got better. You're listening to Make Some Noise Podcast, episode number 465 with guest Shantae Cohn. Welcome to Make Some Noise Podcast, your guide for strategies, tools, and insight to empower yourself. I'm your host, Andrea Owen, global speaker, entrepreneur, life coach since 2007, and author of three books that have been translated into 18 languages and are available in 22 countries. Each week, I'll bring you a guest or a lesson that will help you maximize unshakable confidence, master resilience, and make some noise in your life. You ready? Let's go. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. I'm so glad that you're here. If you guys knew how many times I start and stop these intros, sometimes, not every week, but sometimes, you would be aghast. (laughs) Because I think it's partly because I am so, I just feel like you guys are here in the room with me. And I just, I had to stop and start again because I was stretching when I started the intro and I was like, welcome back to the podcast. No, no, we're not going to do that. But what I wanted to find out is have any of you been traveling via airplanes this summer? It's painful. It's painful out there. And it's it's a mess. I won't even get into it. So I've traveled and, and, I didn't travel for a long time over the pandemic. I didn't really go anywhere. That kind of all came to a halt. But for some reason, over the last couple of months, I've been on an airplane four different times. It's just rowdy. It's rowdy here with my schedule. And um, two of them were total nightmares. (laughs) The other two were like barely like nah, that might be you know had to run through the airport to catch a connection which i ended up doing and then the other one was totally fine um i just my condolences my condolences to you if you have lost luggage if you have have had to cancel a flight where you needed to be somewhere important and be with people you cared about mine was mine was for work so it wasn't anything that was like detrimental but I be th- I'm thinking about these people who are going to family reunions, who are going to visit loved ones who are sick, who are going to, you know, maybe it's like their first grandchild being born or just these really important life events that are being just turned upside down. So I am feeling for you. I hope that this is over soon. I have heard that it won't be. But if you can drive, do that. Amy Smith and I drove to a conference last week. Was it last week? I don't know. And uh, it was like six or seven hours. And that was not fun. I will admit, I don't like driving. And I was the driver, so I don't like driving that much. I don't like being a passenger. My driving anxiety, you guys, is coming back. It's coming back. And it's not my favorite. Raise your hand if you have that. That's fun, being, being a passenger and having like runaway thoughts about, I won't even say bad things on the freeway and like pushing the brake on your (laughs) the passenger side and holding onto the oh shit handle. Oh, it's kind of the worst. It's the worst. But you know, what's not the worst is this theme on spirituality, which we are kind of round in the corner here. And I am excited to introduce you to today's guest. This theme has been so fun for me because this is not my area of expertise like at all. So it's all new to me. It's so fascinating. And I have a, I have a, actually, I think I have a handful more guests after, after Shantae today, but let me, let me introduce you to her. Shantae Cohn is a mental health counselor, psychic and energy worker. Whoa. 
Located in Boise, Idaho, Shante has been in the mental health and disability field for 15 years. In 2017, Shante graduated from Capella University with her Master's of Science in Clinical Psychology with specializations in clinical counseling and sex therapy. Shante is changing what mental health support can be, creating services that are fun, magical, and out of the box has afforded her the ability to overcome a lot of typical hurdles in mental health counseling. Some of Shantae's specializations include women's empowerment, biracial and multiracial peoples, energy work, and highly sensitive people or empaths. Shantae offers coaching services, mental health services, and magic, psychic, and tarot services. What Yes, I had to have her on. I'm so excited for you to hear this conversation. So without further ado, here is Shantae. Shantae, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. to. T- as I was saying earlier, before we started recording, I found you on TikTok, which is, which should be a little, like, I'm sure there's people who don't really understand TikTok. They're like a little bit of a raised eyebrow. Like, why is Andrea getting these people from a dancing app? It's like, <laughs> <laughs> mental but, uh, health is yeah. huge over there. Oh yeah. It's really, really a big deal. And there's some fantastic content over there. And so I, you know, my for you page knows what I like and you came up and I started following you and loved what you were saying over there. So thank you for coming on. Uh, one of the, I think it might've been the video that, that, um, that made me follow you. You were talking about feeling your feelings. And specifically you were saying, and I, I talk about this all the time, but I, I don't think that my listeners can hear it enough. So let's talk about it some more about how many times we kind of like gather information. Like we're like collectors, you know, like, okay, I have this diagnosis and this is my attachment style. And this is my trauma here, are my abandonment wounds. And we sometimes think that we're helping ourselves by kind of, you know, tallying up all of these things, but, to, but we're not actually feeling our feelings right? Mm -mm. So can you talk to us about that a little bit more and, and give some advice on like, if you were going to give a client some homework, how would they go about starting? So one thing I want to talk about is there's nothing wrong with the journey. Cause that's what it is. Even if it's mental health, mind, body, soul, it's all a journey. Yeah. Um, and so we live in a mind world, a logical world. Intelligence is everything. What you see is what you get you know, is what we promote. And so finding out information about yourself really does go towards the largest, larger part of understanding yourself. However, a lot of people reach a place where they're like, Oh, I'm just, I feel like I'm never satiated. I'm just eating, you know, like the pirates of the Caribbean, they just eat and it never satiates. Mm -hmm. And so literally that means you're ready to transition into the body. So mind, body, soul. And so that's where we get stuck. And that's where we don't understand a lot because Mm -hmm. The body is the balance to the mind. The body quiets the mind. That's why we like meditation and mindfulness, you know, quieting the mind to get into the experience in the now. And so feeling your feelings. When I made that video, people were like angry. They're like, I don't know what you mean. How do I do this? Give me tasks on how to feel my body. And the thing is, it is going into this realm of experience. I give, I will give like some little tips about it. But basically what I do is bridge that gap from the known to the unknown. And the unknown is a lot about things we just don't get. And so Mm -hmm. um, the the tips I start giving to people and when I work with people is just, first of all, know your body. Like that is the biggest things. We do not know our bodies at all. That's what I was going to ask you. Like I, I was thinking like, is it unique to each person or are there kind of like universal things? Well, there's, there's like universal things that I talk about because it applies to everyone in different levels in the journey. So observation, I tell people observation and self-care, especially observation through the body. Like when in doubt, you could be having a horrible week, the worst time of your life, observation and self-care. Most of us do not have our self-care game up and it needs to be really, really like level 10 self-care because when you're doing life, when you're doing the wellness journey, things get tough. And so you need to be able to take care of yourself, to love yourself and to know yourself. And the other part of that is observation. If you don't know what you're doing, if you don't know what you're feeling, what you're experiencing sensations and those kind of things, then you can't do anything about it. So that's what I give my clients. First things first, usually no matter where they are, observation and self-care. And it takes a while. So don't expect it overnight. It can take years. 
Uh, thank you for saying that last part. And I was thinking when you were saying that, I was thinking about, okay, what did, what did my journey look like when I, cause I very much was that person. Like, what does that mean? A, what does that mean? B, even if I know what it means, I don't want to do it because it's mm-hmm. scary and unknown mm-hmm. and risky. And it's hard enough just to like gather this information that I leave in my brain. I remember in the beginning when I was like, I really dedicated myself to this journey of personal development and like healing myself and my life kept falling apart. And I was like, maybe it's me. Um, <laughs> it turns out part of it was, <laughs> I guess I, you know, there were some terrible people who had done some crappy things, but that was up to them to fix, not me. But I remember for the first time understanding that none of my feelings were wrong because I'm a quick to anger person and I always felt wrong for it. You know, good girls don't get angry. Men don't like angry women. Like that whole narrative was always playing. And so finally, when I, when I was gave myself the permission to just experience whatever was happening, I think that was enormously helpful. And also I was just writing an email to my, my community about this. Also naming exactly what was happening in the moment and again, not making myself wrong for it. So a couple of weeks ago, I was talking to my therapist and the topic of sex came up and I immediately felt like my stomach kind of like flipped over my throat just, and my neck got tight. And I immediately had the feeling of like wanting to shut down and like change a subject or make a joke or tell him it's fine. <laughs> I need to talk about it. But in that moment, I, I just was like, oh, this is interesting what's happening in my body. And I can't remember if I said it out loud to him or not. I probably did just like what was happening. Cause it's good information to know that. So I just wanted to give some examples to my community of like what that might look like. Is that fairly common? Like I'm not a weirdo. <laughs> oh no. So it's so interesting. People always come to me. They're like, Oh, th- this is the weirdest thing you've ever heard is I'm like uh, girl. No, yeah. first of all, <laughs> <It's just> human. <laughs> the human experience is insane you know and so the crazy thing i tell people is like literally the whole thing everything you're doing right now okay a lot of people are like oh i want to grow i want to evolve i want to this i want to that basically what you're doing is getting out of these constructs within your mind like our mind decides this reality we're fed it from you know zero to seven that's when we basically create the hardware the neurons in our brain and that's what we got Mm -hmm. and that's what we have to work with as an adult And so we are connected to this reality. We were fed. We didn't choose it. And there are these constructs that no one can fit into. And so it's a lot of suffering. And so we think we're getting better. We're evolving. We're doing more. But what we actually are doing is realizing that we are fine just how we are. The problems come with thinking we are not. The problems come with trying to fit into these concepts and ignoring ourselves, ignoring what we need. And so every step of the way is just accepting more and more. I can't change this. Yeah. This is me. And then that self-care brings in that love and you start to build almost this romantic relationship with yourself. And so you get to this point where you have to come to terms with, I can't go on with this behavior, this, 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 or this, because I love myself so much. I can't do it. I'm tired of suffering. And that's literally what the journey is. And as you let things go, which is so terrifying, like what you know, mm-hmm. addressing things, you are liberated and you feel peace and you feel free. And then, you know, she can hit the fan all day. Yeah. And you're like, you're good with you and it's a whole different vibe knowing you can handle it. Yeah. Well, and sometimes you can, it's okay. You know, which kind of brings me to my next question. And you mentioned it a little bit towards the end there, when you said, you know, you feel free, you feel peace. Shopify's already taken the cash register online, helping millions sell billions around the world. But did you know that Shopify can do the same thing at your retail store? Give your point of sale system a serious upgrade with Shopify. With Shopify, you get a powerhouse selling partner that effortlessly unites your in-person and online sales into one source of truth. Track every sale across your business in one place and know exactly what's in stock. Connect with customers inline and online. Shopify helps you drive store traffic with plug and play tools built for marketing campaigns from TikTok to Instagram and beyond. Get hardware that fits your business. Take payments by smartphone, transform your tablet into a point of sale system, or use Shopify's POS Go mobile device for a battle-tested solution. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash noise, 
all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash noise to take your retail business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash noise. It's hard to find a great mentor who can help me level up. My dream mentor, Shonda Rhimes. So I was really excited when I heard she has a class on Masterclass. With Masterclass, you can learn from the best to become your best. Masterclass is the only streaming platform where you can learn and grow with over 200 plus of the world's best. For just $10 a month, an annual membership with Masterclass gets you unlimited access to every instructor. And you can access Masterclass on your phone, computer, smart TV, or even in audio mode. I'm always looking for ways to be a better writer, so I took Shonda Rhimes' screenwriting class. It helped me gain concrete technical advice, including structuring, the writing process, and with shows under her belt like Grey's Anatomy and Bridgerton, it was so helpful. Plus, every new membership comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Don't wait another moment to start your learning journey with Masterclass. Right now, our listeners get an additional 15% off any annual membership at masterclass.com slash Andrea. That's 15% off at masterclass.com slash Andrea. Masterclass.com slash Andrea. How do people know it's quote unquote working? Because I, 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 you know, as humans, we like to see results, like what, and, and not feel like we're sort of just treading water. What do you, what are some things that you see in your clients or that you tell them to look for? So number one, I would say this is where it comes in really handy to have a really, really good guide, mentor, healer, shaman, counselor, because it, it, you literally have to train yourself mm-hmm. um, because the brain wants to survive. That is its entire MO and it will see things that pose a danger. So all your triggers, that's what you're seeing constantly. You literally are not seeing an entire spectrum of existence. So mm-hmm. you're going up against reality that is an illusion. So think about that. You are in something that is not real. It is based on things from zero to seven. You didn't choose and experiences and trauma. So to fight that consistency is consistently is a lot of work. So it is very helpful to have someone with you because what I do is constantly ask yourself measuring because the brain likes measuring. Okay. From here to last week, from here to last month, from here to last year, what strides have I made being open, not judgmental, what is different, even if it's the smallest thing. And that literally rewires your brain. Like you start to be able to see different things. And that is paired with like gratitude work and starting to see positives instead of that survival negative, this is mm-hmm. going to kill me mode. It's what else is there? What else can I see that maybe I'm not seeing now? And it, it literally rewires the brain. It helps you see past the illusion, but it does take time again. And that's what I spend a lot of time with, with clients. Like, you know, this is, they get frustrated. This is happening. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. Okay. What did you do last month? What are the yeah. differences? And they're like, well, you know, I had this, this, or this. And I'm like, do you under, and I say, do you understand this is God love us for our careers, for getting our degrees, for having families. This is the hardest thing you'll ever do. And you just told me that you now are able to spot your triggers. Do you recognize you now are seeing through illusion? You've rewired your brain, like physiologically, chemical differences in your Mm -hmm. brain. You have done all these things energetically in a month's time. So I tell them, go celebrate. Go, and I always say, go eat ice cream. I don't know why I don't really like ice cream, (laughs) but I'm like, go celebrate. Go take care of yourself. And they think I'm crazy, but you got to celebrate the wins because this is not easy. (laughs) I love that. I I never I never really pinpointed that. And it's, thank you for, for saying that because my best friend often reminds me of those types of things. You know, when I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm here again, or I can't believe I'm having to, to go through this again, or I'm getting triggered by this again. And she'll remind me like, remember where you were, you know, a year ago or five years ago, how you would have handled this. And, and it's, it is so incredibly, I think I read somewhere too, might've been in like popular science or psycho, you know, (laughs) But that that it is it, like that. There's research that shows us, and especially for for children, to explain to them the brain chemistry, because it helps us totally understand and feel more gratitude and look at the positives, et cetera, when we understand how our brain can change in a positive tr- direction. And so, furthermore, 
I tell everyone, you cannot go back. It is impossible to go back. You, I don't really believe so much in regression. I believe that you come back to places with new tools. So mm-hmm. we're in this concept of time, which means we are always gathering data. Like you cannot be the person you were yesterday. It's impossible. You, whether you have an experience, who, let's say you just stay in your room all day. You're thinking, you're collecting data. You're thinking about things. You have t- school or you have tools that you did not have before. So I see it as a spiral. So you might come to the same you know, like as you go up in the spiral, you might come back again, almost seeming like the same spot, but you're, you're not in the same spot. So it's important to remember that we, we don't regress, that we're given opportunities to basically understand the situation more and grow more and eventually heal and, you know, accept it and surrender it. Mm -hmm. So this is why it's so, I think, imperative to get someone to help you because, there are staples and tools that are basically like this huge fatty, like toolbox that are like, this is how you climb this mountain. You need, you know, this rope, you need this buckle and it's how you get through it. Because when you hit those lows, what I say is this is just an opportunity. It means you actually are leveling up. And that helps me so much. Mm -hmm. You are not regressing. You are giving and you're being given an opportunity to move beyond this. And so that hits different. When, when I started thinking that way, I was like, I'll be damned if this situation is going to keep me in the same place. Even if I learn one iota more, and then you start to realize, oh my gosh, after this horrible, horrible situation, I feel badass as hell. And so it's kind of like, okay, my ice cream party's coming. I just got to endure this huge depression I about, you're the ice you know, cream man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of the acronym AFGO, AFGO. Have you heard that one? Uh-uh. Another fucking growth opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It can get dangerous because, you know, we want that growth, right? We want to get better. So, uh, so you just have to be careful because you get tired real quick when they don't stop happening. You know, when yeah. you've been doing the wellness journey for six years and you're like, okay, you know, I'm tired of leveling up at this point. I, just, just... <laughs> I have been in that place so many times. What, what do I, I say to my best friend? Like I'm, tired of playing personal development. Like I'm tired yeah. of, like it starts to feel like it's its own full-time job and I'm over it. Like, I just want to play candy crush and like talk about countertops. Like, <laughs> yeah. well, <laughs> it's exhausting then, sometimes. So that's the subtle, subtle shift of when you know that you're taking on spirituality as a means to change yourself versus I'm living life and I'm just living. So okay, say more about that. That's interesting. Yes. Yeah, so it's a very subtle shift. It's the, it's the shift from I'm bettering myself, which is kind of hierarchical thinking. I'm getting somewhere. I'm going somewhere. That's forward thinking. That's the future. The future never comes. And it's, and it's based on when we get to the nitty gritty, I'm not good enough now. Mm-hmm. It's based on like what could be, which is fine. But when we live that way every day, that's exhausting because we literally never get to the future. We never get there. Gotcha. It is never what we want it to be. So the subtle shift is you start kind of getting out of almost like this wellness journey and you're just living and, and you're incorporating these tools into your life. So it's hard to explain, but it's a shift from I'm on a journey. I'm doing this to I'm living I have tools and I'm experiencing and I'm sur- I'm not just surviving, I'm thriving. So mm-hmm. it goes to kind of this mindset of what's happening now in this experience. How am I feeling? Am I liking this? Am I not? What tools do I have to employ? Go about my day, experience this life. Not so much worried if I'm getting better, but very much focused on, am I experiencing happiness? Am I experiencing peace? So it's very much in the moment more mm-hmm. so. And it's, It's from going from these expectations and almost putting on this other label because the brain wants to do this. We are in a world of constructs. And so we feel comfortable. I am um, a spiritual junkie. I am a wellness, you know, lover. But what it comes down to is at the very basis, you are you. You might participate in wellness tools because you want to have a better life or feel happier. But it's almost like, it's not identifying anymore with these constructs, no matter what they are. And so this is hard. This is the stuff that gets hard to explain with words because this mm-hmm. is immersing into experience because the brain's like, okay, well, um, what does that even mean? Right. Right. Make it make sense. <laughs> <I'll say. laughs> Give me some tasks. Give me some tasks to do this. 
your um, journey as a mental health professional, you've worked in the school system and like kind of all these different places. What have you learned that brought you, or was there kind of a moment or, that brought you to having the the practice that you do now? Everything. My life has been a complete shit show aside from my career. My career has been just beautiful, yeah, beautifully lined up. I'm not saying it was easy, but it was the one thing in my life that just laid out step by worked. step. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so what I will say, it was a really good representation of my spiritual journey because I went into the field. I had my first psychology class in high school and I was like, whoa, you mean there's, I can understand why I'm 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 this and and crazy and this and this and this. And so I was passionate about it. And I was like a voracious, like wanted to know everything. And I learned so much. And um, I'm a data collector. So I just collected data, collected data. And then I started being in the field at 21 and I collected experiences. And what started to happen is I kept collecting this data that didn't necessarily fit well with the experiences I was having. It was wonderful and it was great, but it kind of diverged to where the theories and the things I learned in school are wonderful, but they just couldn't meet the expectations of what my clients were bringing to me or what the people I was working with were bringing with me. And I just started to feel that within myself. And what I realized is there is more than just knowledge. There's more than the mind. And I tell my clients that we are trying to relationship and human with the mind, when the mind is meant to keep us surviving, to do different tasks, to be able to get us from A to Z, it is I tell them the mind is not meant to human. The body is meant or to people. The body is meant to people. So our relationships is supposed to be from this place of the body. And so I started just listening to people. I started realizing that when I got out of my own head. And when I was completely balanced, I could hear what they actually were saying without the lens of my triggers and trauma. I heard their pure truth. And the crazy thing is people are not saying what you think they're saying. You are hearing what you expect them to say or what you're afraid they're saying. So we are all around basically not even hearing each other, all in these little illusions and so disconnected. And I found that when I just sat, I didn't even have to do anything. And I was authentic and I felt love that they got better. And it evolved from that. Sometimes people just need you to hear them because what, what I found was when I just humaned with them through my body and I've been getting better and better at it, they began to human too. And they awoke to something that we've forgotten. And that's just in being authentically you as much as possible. And then the rest is just kind of icing on the cake or maybe some struggles, but it's not us and it doesn't define us. Wow. I don't think I've ever heard it laid out like that. It's beautiful. Well, it's a deeper thing. We're not collectively there, even in the field. um, We're still really focused on the science. And so that's where I always call myself the black sheep of the field. And I half expect someday to get kicked out because um, there is a lot that isn't quantifiable, you know, it's human connection. And so the further I got, the more I was like, I cannot give up these things. Like I started to recognize energy. I hold space for people. I manipulate their energy, their chakras. I, I change their very essence at the time into different experiences. And I can't not do that because people leave completely different than when they came and they feel peaceful and they get a taste of what life could be. And that is transcendent. And so I do find myself moving towards something that isn't necessarily what I was taught, but is built on what I was taught. And it's just, it's a different thing. And so I know a lot of therapists and practitioners are being compelled and you can find things like in phenomenology and somatics and, um, you know, even you, there were a lot of, you know, psychologists and people in the field played into this and they started delving into this, but we are holding really fastidiously to this logic, scientific, A equals this, equals this, equals this. And so it's a process. I am going to write down the word phenomenology because I have never, that's one I have not heard of. (laughs) That That literally changed my life. It's just the phenomenon of human experience. So it was literally... I will say I have, I I feel like I can understand some concepts, the most difficult stuff I have ever read. It's talking about reality and it's talking about at the base of everything is pure experience. Mm -hmm. And then we add layers to that. Like I'm a mom, 
I, you know, am a cis white woman or, you know, I am bisexual. I don't like this type, you know, whatever we add these things, or I'm a musician and they, they build up layers that get us away from pure existence. Um, and so the whole journey is basically recognizing these layers, getting to yourself and pure existence. And then the fun part is when you turn that around and you can start to manipulate and play with this world, because if you want to be Republican or Democrat, great, you know, but choose it and then play within that world. Um, be who you want to be from a place of happiness. A lot of so much of what is put on us is not happy. You know, politics is not happy. Oftentimes religion makes us unhappy. All these things that we try to find happiness from and, and figure out who we are, aren't fitting the bill. They aren't doing it for us. And so the real deal, it goes back to that difference in pursuing wellness versus just being well is getting to you, being authentically you. And then, you know, you can choose this or you can choose that, but it is not you. I'm going to need a minute. (laughs) No, no. No, it's taken me a while to even get here. I'll tell you, it's taken me, you know, 36 years. I understand. (laughs) Oh my gosh. You still have so, so much more career in front of you and life. It's com- it sounds complicated and beautiful and so mysterious at the same time, like all of those things. Thank you for sharing that. I um of course I have so many questions, <laughs> but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it simple. Today's podcast is sponsored by Midi Health. Ladies, are you over 40 like me and dealing with hot flashes, insomnia, brain fog, moodiness, some vaginal dryness, or weight gain? Don't just accept it as part of aging. These symptoms are often linked to hormonal changes during perimenopause and menopause. At Midi Health, they get it. Their experts know what you're going through and how to help. Midi clinicians are menopause specialists offering safe, effective, FDA-approved solutions. And guess what? Midi Care is covered by insurance. So stop pushing through it alone. Schedule a virtual visit and dive deep into your unique symptoms and health background. You'll walk away feeling heard and with a plan to start feeling better. Visit Midi Health today and reclaim your well-being. You deserve to feel great. Book your virtual visit today at joinmidi.com. That's joinmidi.com. Joinmidi.com. You know, when you're listening to a song on the radio and you get the profound feeling that the song playing was written about you. Now imagine having the power to gift that same incredible feeling to someone you love with an original song from Songfinch that actually is written just for them. Songfinch lets you create an original radio quality song inspired by your own life and the people you love. It's completely unique, personal, and lasts forever. Whether your song is for Father's Day, an upcoming graduation, wedding, or anniversary, or even just a gift to show your loved one how much you care, start your song now to lock in one of Songfinch's top artists. I gifted Songfinch to myself, a song about my late father, and I'm so excited to play you a clip. Flipping through the slides of learning how to live and how to love And coming undone a father-daughters without So she writes it down One of my clients heard about Songfinch from this podcast, and so she had a song created for her son who was graduating, and she told me that they both cried when she played it for him and that it exceeded her expectations. For a limited time, Songfinch is letting our listeners upload their song to Spotify for free so you and the lucky person you gift it to can listen to it anywhere anytime. Go to songfinch.com slash noise and start your song. After you purchase, you'll be prompted to add Spotify streaming for your original song for free, a $50 value. Again, my URL is songfinch.com slash noise. Don't forget to share your song with us too. songfinch.com slash noise. And I'm curious about what are your feelings on thought work and like CBT and um, like that type of stuff that kind of keeps us in our head. Cause I I've heard mixed things, you know, CBT helped me so much when I was diagnosed with, I had panic disorder. I was in my mid twenties and it helped me tremendously. But now as I've, I, I had a therapist and this particular therapist had 
a PhD and, and so many different things. And I brought up a topic and this therapist started doing thought work with me. And I was like, are, are we doing thought work right now? <laughs> like I felt almost insulted. Like my trauma was being insulted. I'm like, oh no, no, no. This, but I'm like, well, maybe this person knows better. So I'm, I'm curious what your thoughts are now that you've shared all of that, that experience that you have. Here, all my body, my body. I know. Sense. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, first things first, a little segue. <laughs> we don't get taught this stuff. This was just deep, profound work on my part because I couldn't go on suffering. You know? Yeah. So it's, we get a disservice in the field. So I really try to vouch for my psychologists, my psychiatrists, mental health practitioners, counselors, because this is what we're taught. And we're like CBT, CBT. Mm-hmm. And you know, that's what insurances want. The whole system, I'm not going to get into it. It's a system and we are shackled to it. I have just chosen to break away, um, which is scary. But um, what I will say is it goes back to the same concept is everything is we are in a journey and we will always evolve and not identifying with anything. That is the difficult thing because we want to identify with things. I am first and foremost, a mother that defines me, but until it doesn't, you know, until you're not satiated and not doing for yourself and you're not, you know, but you identify so hard with being a mother and what that entails that you forget that there's anything else. So that's a really watered down version. But what I'm saying is we are constantly evolving and constantly shifting. And the more we try to attach to things, the more we suffer. So CBT is an amazing, amazing tool for parts of the journey. In my opinion, um, I use it. It's part of my toolbox, but it is part of an ever-growing, ever-changing bag of tricks I have. Sometimes CBT is great. I tell my clients to have life mantras that are like, and I don't even have a good name for them. I probably should coin something, but it is something that's irrefutable to the brain. So we have our stories, we have our narratives, we have our core beliefs. What are they? So that takes mind work. That takes thought work. What are the thoughts you're having? What are the stories you have? You got to know that to get to your core beliefs. And then when you have your core beliefs, what can irrefutably challenge that? So I tell people, my story is I am bad, you know? And so my irrefutable truth is I am love. And what goes to the next stage that CBT can't do is I envision an experience where I am giving and receiving love, which is being with my clients. I always think about when I'm feeling that bad, like I'm bad, I'm a bad person. I think about being in session, watching my clients bloom and grow and feeling love and happiness and transcendence. I'm like, that irrefutable, that cannot be true that I'm bad because this is true. So that's what I'm talking about is like CBT got me there, but then I had to employ somatic work, vision, you know, visualization, mindfulness. So it's a shift in concept to everything as part of the whole versus this, Mm -hmm. this, this, I identify with this, this has much more meaning than that. That's what gets us in trouble. And that's where we feel distress is because when that, this, does not hold up to the world, which it won't, then we feel the dissonance, cognitive dissonance, what I believe is not working with what the world is saying. And that's really where we come down to the problem with logic and intelligence and science. And Lord help me with everyone that's going to get mad about this, but science is simply what we know now. Right now. Mm -hmm. But it is constantly evolving. What we knew 20 years ago was nothing compared to now. And so it is almost like, Again, I'm thinking of the, you know, the Pirates of the Caribbean, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a guidebook. It's, you know, it's <laughs> so can many go metaphors by. for life. <laughs> it's, it's guidelines. And yet we hold it irrefutably. This is true. Okay. Until it's not. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And when it's not, you suffer, you have a, a breakdown, you cannot understand reality and it's, it's terrible. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. So Things like CBT or thought work are like a flathead screwdriver in a toolbox with dozens and dozens of t- other tools. Mm-hmm. And the reason I chose flathead screwdriver because it's like it's a staple. I feel like it's a staple. The one thing that it helped me do for people who have never done it and are you know maybe you've never gone to therapy and and are thinking about starting with that. M- what it helped me realize is that my narrative was you said yours was I am bad. Mine was I am unsafe. And it was like in 
every area of my life. It was, I am unsafe in my romantic relationships. I'm unsafe in my friendships. I'm unsafe driving. Like I would have panic attacks while driving. It was, it was bad. Um, and so what it helped me do is realize what was happening in the moment just so I could slow down. And it doesn't, I will say this, it doesn't work every single time. It's, it's not, it, it, it helped a lot, but not every single time it would help just pump the brakes a little bit on what felt like a freight train of thoughts yeah. that, that were moving so fast. I couldn't even cognitively understand what was happening. And then it was just a, like a full body experience of panic. Um, so it helped me slow down enough to be able to understand, okay, I'm feeling unsafe and then move on from there. And I think we're comfortable with it because CBT is something we understand. Um, mm-hmm. And it's a step-by-step process. <laughs> well, yeah. That and so that's why I say I'm a bridge. I give that to my clients, but I'm taking them to where CBT does not live, you know. Right, right, right. Um, mm-hmm. So I would say to anybody, body work never helps unless you just miraculously came into this reality, totally immersed in your body, not conditioned, which I'm sure there are people that were not conditioned by a logical world. But I was just we, about to say, have you met those people? Like, do they exist? No. No, I was say, probably not going into your <laughs> office. <laughs> I don't meet them. No, throw it another dimension. <laughs> well, that would take. I don't even know how that you would have to come in just like this pure little being of light that had their tricks. You know, your track you're going on, and nothing could touch it. I don't even know how that worked. I'm sure. Do there you ever think like, about like since we're kind of on this esoteric topic? Do you ever think about you know if this Earth manages to stick around for I don't know, let's say hundreds or thousands of years from now, do you ever think there's something that they're going to look back on in the mental health scope and go, well, that was weird that they were doing that. Like, can you believe that they were doing that? Do you ever think that? No, I don't. Not until now. (laughs) I'm a wow. No, I don't think that. I don't know because we're evolving so much. And right now we are evolving like crazy. I'm sure you're meeting people. Everyone's talking about stuff they have never considered. And part of that evolution is realizing the parts of a whole. So I would like to have faith that people just be like, oh, well, that was the evolutionary necessity we needed at the moment. Yeah. I mean, if you think about stuff that they did even a hundred years ago, I mean, just my grandmother was treated for depression with shock therapy. I don't know how well it worked, but, and I know they still do that sometimes and Mm -hmm. who knows, who knows. Okay. I was going to ask you, like, one of my questions on my list that I just glanced at is, what do you think sets you apart from other counselors? I feel like you answered that. (laughs) But is there anything else that you wanted to add or tag on to that question? (laughs) Uh, I guess I'll get on my soapbox because that's what I've been working on. Yes, please. We love those over here. (laughs) Yes. Women empowerment, you know, like, let's all get on our own damn boxes. But what I will say is I am really damn good at what I do. It's like, I believe you. Thank you for saying that out loud and exemplifying that. Yeah. Well, yes, of course. I, all I know is I came in this world doing this. I have Uh been doing this my entire life as a child. Like, why is that person doing that? What's going on? What is this situation? You can imagine the anxiety I have. Like, I have never met anyone with anxiety. Like I've birthed, you know, I've worked obviously on it and I'm to a place of quite some Zen quite a bit. This is my wheelhouse. This is what I'm made to do. This is what I love to do. And what I will say is I connect with people in ways that I think most people never, ever experience because I've done the work to do so. And it does make for an interesting life because I don't find very many people that are like me, but it makes for very rich and wonderful experiences. And I have not met anyone that hasn't done the work that hasn't changed. I am a catalyst of change and change happens around me, whether I want it to or not. So Mm -hmm. um, I think in that sense, it's a little bit different. You know, you'll get what you're you're buying. It might not feel good. And I tell people, this is not for the faint of heart, but do you want to live this life? And I'll take you to where you want to go. Okay. I have one more question for you and then, and then we'll wrap it up. I definitely want you to tell people where they can find more about you and, and maybe even work with you. What is the, is there like a common theme that, that people come to you for like common problem or challenge that they're facing, or is it all over the board? What, what do you see a lot? Um, so hands down, pretty much everyone that comes to me is what I call an empath or what we call in the field, a highly sensitive person. 
But at this point, I'm wondering if everyone's just a highly sensitive person. I was, I was, I've been wondering the same thing. I was introduced to that topic back in the nineties. My dad got yeah. sober and started doing therapy and his therapist recommended the book to him. I still have my copy that he gave me from then, wow. but now I wonder, and I'm like, I feel like this is just a human experience. And some people are just more in tune to it than others. I don't know. Well, the work that I do, everyone's getting to that. So like people, the psychic work, the energy work, the out there stuff that seems so mystical. I personally believe everyone can harness that. Um, but I tend to get people that are high anxiety. I tend to be, get people that just aren't functioning in their lives. They usually are pretty chaotic. Um, they have trouble. Maybe they're overdoing it with logic. I get a lot of really um, high, powerful, high functioning, um, badass women you know, a lot of times they have their own businesses, Mm -hmm. they're in school, they're doing that kind of thing, but they're just like, I'm going to lose my shit. Or I am looking for something else. I I want something. Everyone wants something, but they can't identify it. It's just this, this hunger. Um, so that's not really a really good way to sum it up, but I get people that are searching and they don't know what they're searching for. And then I say something or they hear something and it clicks. Usually people are like that. I don't know what it is, but that. That makes perfect sense to me because that's a lot of this audience that you're talking to um, typically have kicked ass in their career and struggle either with their relationship with themselves or their relationship with other people. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it's something that's going on inside or not going on inside that is sort of causing this disconnect and this incongruency. So yes, you're speaking our language, Shante, speaking (laughs) our language. Um, All right. Well, we need to wrap it up, but where can people find you? So they can like my website. I have a website, um, www.shantecone.com. And that basically is where I have, I try to keep everything up that's going on. Um, I'm having an overhaul right now, but as far as connecting with me, like I'm on TikTok and Instagram. Um, I put some videos up there, but some deeper work. Um, I do have services. I have limited spots for like in-depth work. I literally just kind of closed the door and made it smaller because the work I do is just so much. Um, So I have limited spaces for that, but I often have like empath coaching or different workshops. And one of the things I'm super excited about is I'm doing a retreat in August. And it's like, it is like everything that I've been like gathering data for, for the last seven years, it's finally all coming into play. And it's going to be like this goddess retreat and it's going to be in Miami, probably the third week of, of August. And it's going to be working with your sun goddess and your Lilith goddess, which is just basically saying that goddess of you that you accept. And then that dark, deep goddess that you're ashamed of, or that your you know, your shadows follow. So it's shadow work. It's empowerment. There's going to be a lot of pampering. It's going to be sexy. It's going to be a lot of crying, a lot of bonding on the beach. It's, Basically me in a nutshell, like super sexy, hot mess, you know, all that. <laughs> I lo- That sounds amazing. I <laughs> love that so much. I've never been to Miami, but I've heard amazing things about it. Oh, love um, it. Are you in the Midwest? Are you located? Where are you? So I'm, I am in Idaho. So okay. I can see people for counseling in Idaho, but I'm actually moving to Florida. So I'm hoping to have dual licensure okay. for the next couple months. Okay. I have one, actually, I lied. I have one more question. So your camera, people can't see this because we're not recording, the, but your camera moved and there was like a really interesting portrait like behind you. What is that? It looked like, yeah. This what is that? So her name's Danielle Noel. She is like my spirit animal. She does is tarot she, cards. Is she like a oracles. Hindu goddess? Oh, well, that's the person who made it. Oh, so okay. This, okay. Okay. This is just a picture of like, um, your inner goddess. So like Aphrodite or whatever you want to call it. So mother, whatever, but the artist is Daniel Noel. And I have several, I have another picture and it's just, she's the most beautiful surreal work ever. It's beautiful. We will pop it. Can can people is, was that like an original for you or can people look at that on Etsy? Oh no, it's yeah. She has her own website. Okay. We'll publish yeah. the link in the show notes for, for that. Oh, people yeah. are like, I want to see it. <laughs> Shout uh, out to I, Danielle. Hopefully, you know, send me yeah, some I love supporting artists. And um, thank you. I kept like seeing it. I'm like, what is that? It, it was really interesting. Um, thank you so much for being there. Before we close, is there anything that you want to circle back on and touch on? Or do you feel complete? 
Um, I guess the last thing I want to say is I am looking for whoever this resonates with. I'm calling my tribe and I'm calling my people right now in a big way. Things are really building and moving and we're all feeling it. And I'm ready to just do some wonderful big things. And I want those people who are called to do that too, to find me. Awesome. And so it is. The energy is out there. Thank you so much for being here, Shante. And to everyone listening, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate and value you and it so much. And remember, everybody, it's our life's journey to make ourselves better humans and our life's responsibility to make the world a better place. Bye for now. Hey, everyone. Thanks again for listening to the show. And just a quick reminder that if your company needs a speaker or a trainer, I might be the right person for you. I speak and do keynotes on confidence and resilience for mixed audiences, as well as do trainings on The Daring Way, which is the methodology based on the research of Dr. Brene Brown. So if you think it might be a good fit, hit me up at support at andreaowen.com or head over to my speaking page, andreaowen.com slash speaking. I'd like to introduce you to the Minimalist Moms podcast. It's hard enough being a mom, and the last thing you need is stress from too much stuff and an overcrowded schedule. For too long, I lived with the mindset that bigger was better, and the more I added to my life, instead of feeling better, I felt overwhelmed. It was time for a radical new mindset. Less is more. I'm not into extremes. I didn't throw everything away. My brand of minimalism is more about adding than subtracting. Get rid of the excess to make room for what you love. In other words, it's about living life with purpose. I hope you'll listen in and my guest and myself can inspire you to think more and do with less. The Minimalist Moms Podcast, available wherever you listen to podcasts.